Okay, I made uh, some interesting videos about a half, well, it wasn't that long ago, it was about four months ago, where I was showing you with a Geiger counter these screaming radioactive lenses. You could actually just type in radioactive lens on YouTube. I'm sure my fat face will be the first that comes up. Um, I want to show you some interesting lenses over the next couple weeks, just a few, not many. Um, light, obviously, certainly is electrical. Yeah, and the notion that uh, light is uh, little photon particles was always considered an absurdity by Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, literally the gods of electrical uh, engineering that gave us 100% of the world's electrical grid. Um, but anyway, we don't use radioactive thorium in lenses anymore. This is an interesting lens. I don't want to show you the front of it. It only has three elements. This is a Cook triplet lens. It is relatively pretty damn cheap. This one's not radioactive, by the way. This is a 133-year-old lens design, a Cook triplet. This lens has three elements in it. Three. The soap bubble bokeh that comes off of this, incredible. Anyway, um, what, why don't you uh, guess uh, what radioactive lenses those are? Um, that I'll be showing you. And by the way, um, the nature of actually uh, doping the lens elements, one of them is a six element uh, lens, is that um, you can actually have uh, really high indexes of refraction without, with incredibly low dispersion. And that means that you can make the elements really thin. Now if you use high index glass, a high index of uh, refraction, it bends the light in, but unfortunately, when you have uh, HI glass, um, you have a serious distortion. So by adding the radioactive thorium to the lenses, which we obviously don't do anymore, um, it uh, really brings the far end spectrum and near end spectrum together. And then you end up in the picker. And I'm not going to show you now, but the flicker page, I'm going to have you wonder. <laughs> I'll show the lenses soon enough. Um, the uh, the flicker images are absolutely magical. The micro contrast is off the hook. These are lenses from the 1960s. Um, I'm actually introducing these lenses for two reasons. One, to show uh, that actually in some ways um, lens design has de-evolved when it comes to primes. As I've told you before, there are three groups of lenses. Prime lenses between 28 millimeters and 400-500. There is everything below 28 millimeters which has its own different uh, series of judgments. And then we have uh, obviously zoom lenses. And also there's really a fourth category which are uh, wide zooms. Um, but also, you know, we don't use radioactive thorium anymore for obvious reasons. Um, one of the lenses that makes really, really magical images, and it's a really cheap lens too, it just screams. It makes the Geiger counter scream like pinching a little girl. Not that I've ever done that. Just go, eee! <laughs> the lens is really radioactive. Um, very, very bad idea to dare stick that lens up to your eyeball for more than uh, a second. Um, I'm going to only use it on, uh, I am only using it on uh, one of my older Fuji cameras. I'm not too interested in bombarding my uh, one of my new Fuji X-T2s with uh, high uh, levels of uh, alpha radiation. No, not, not too interested in that. That, that. that could actually be an issue. Um, even on the old Fuji, you're going to take the lens off immediately uh, when I'm not using it. In other words, pop it on when I'm going to use it and pop it off. That lens screams, and I'll show you with the Geiger counter that it does, in fact, scream. Um, by adding that thorium, it wrangles the light. Just to make things really simple, it wrangles the light together. Um, ever since we banned, for obvious reasons, radioactivity in our, <laughs> in our camera lenses, we've come up with these half-assed substitutes, which kind of do the same thing, but ain't nothing works better than a neat radio. By the way, those yellowish, brownish tints that you see in a lot of old lenses, what that is, is that's the thorium that's actually uh, coloring the glass. You can actually clear it up by sticking it in the sunlight where it's being bombarded by UVs, UV radiation from the sun, and that will clear the, ga the glass up. 
But yeah, those old lenses you've seen them are yellow brown. That's radioactive thorium. But those lenses make some of most of them do. But some of the best ones, they just make images that absolutely the best modern lens couldn't even dare touch. The micro contrast, the depth. Oh my god. Um, so that's actually kind of like a half of a reason. There's all these people out there who's like, Oh, modern lens design has improved. You know, things have gotten better. No, autofocus speed, optical image, op optical image stabilization speed has. No. Actually, in many ways, prime lenses have de-evolved. Now, we've got far better vignetting, lack thereof, a far better uh, a lack of chromatic uh, aberration. But this this lens, by the way, which I'm not going to talk about right now, this lens is the tits. This is an 133-year-old lens design. It's got three damn elements in it. Only three! And it's really damn cheap. I mean, really damn cheap. And it's made in Deutschland, too. Jawohl! Um, this combined with the heavy, heavily radioactive thorium-doped lenses, which I'll show you the images when I introduce the lenses. They are incredible. The images from the lens are unbelievable. It's like, wow, really? Really well made, too. Um, and you can still buy them. And people that know, they know. And most people, most photographers are like, what would be the advantage of buying a radioactive lens? Well, the answer to that is, girlfriend, if you knew how light worked, and you knew the magic of sticking radioactive thorium in a lens and what it does to the light, in a good way. It means you can make lenses with low dispersion, high index of a refraction, then you can make the elements thinner, which is always good because glass is evil. And then you end up with these images that just look ha 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 amazing. So um, I'll let you take a guess at which radioactive lenses it is that I'm referring to. And then uh, we'll go over them and uh, whatnot uh, next week. One of them's being borrowed right now, actually. So I got the other one in the back room. So. That's it. Let me know if you got any questions. Three elements. Soap bubble bokeh. I showed people in a live stream tonight the images from this lens. They were like, oh my god, where do I get one? Ah! <laughs> yeah, tell me again how much modern lenses have improved. They have in zooms. They have in wide angle lenses. When it comes to primes... Things have not improved anywhere near as much as you think that they have. 133-year-old design. What are we not using anymore? Radioactive uh, doped lenses, for obvious reasons. It's, like, it's, it's slightly not legal to sell radio. I don't even know if you guys in Europe could even buy these damn lenses. I'm sure you can in England, but everything's banned in Europe now. Um... What aren't we doing in lenses anymore? We're not doing radioactive lenses anymore. That's kind of a good thing. <laughs> or we're not doing three element. Well, there is a new three element lens, but it is insanely expensive. It's nearly two thousand dollars. It's uh, the Meyer uh, uh, Meyer Gerlitz uh, fifty-eight millimeter, I believe. Anyway, enough talk from me. So, radioactive lenses to come and three element lenses to come. And all of this does a really good job, by the way, of uh, kind of like crushing um, many of the people out there that think, Ah, oh, if it's modern, it's better. Yeah. Really? There's only so many different ways you can reinvent a screwdriver, you know? Ultimately, you know, simplicity is divinity. So, thanks. There is a reason they stuck that radioactive crap in that lenses. That always amazes me. Everybody said, well, those are radioactive lenses. And, and I, I said, do you know why they stuck that stuff in there? Well, yeah, it changes the dispersion. No, what is it about light and its interaction with radioactive thorium makes these lenses and the images that they produce magical, like pixie dust scattered in? I don't know, you know? Yeah, you're right. You, you, you don't know. <laughs> Bye-bye.